There are a ton of cool gadgets in this game which help make your life a little bit easier. From things like the Blade Runners and the Jetpack which help you jump a little bit higher and move around a little bit quicker, to things like the Object Scanner which helps you find things like mushrooms and power slugs which help you craft more effectively, and then there are things like the Xeno Basher and the Rifle which help defend you from any enemies that may not take too kindly to you running a railway through their habitat. But unfortunately in the case of the Rifle, I've never really been able to use it because the ammunition is so darn expensive. It requires two things, the coal and the sulfur, and I don't really have any around here, so I have to go manually back and forth to get this stuff, come back here and craft them, and then before you know it, I'm all out of ammunition that I had just finished building. So in this episode, we're going to try and locate a new area where we're going to be building a bullet factory. In a previous episode, I've featured this track, which goes around the map in a counterclockwise fashion, and where we need to go is up towards the northeast, where there is a deposit of coal and sulfur, which will allow us to grab some of the raw materials for the bullet factory. Now, that's not all of the materials we need. We're going to need some more advanced stuff like beacons and rubber. But having this system here, which kind of connects all the existing factories, is going to allow us to import everything we need up to the new area. So you can see on the map here, I have indicated some of the clear areas where we might be able to build that new track up towards the northeast side of the map. And uh, it's just going to have to be a lot of surveying and figuring out how we want to get from here up to there. But considering that we already have this train system in place, it kind of makes things a lot easier, especially when it comes to grabbing resources and heading between the bases. Oh, God. <laughs> well, there's the other train coming to surprise us. You can see that luckily they just clipped through each other, so we don't have a gigantic explosion and a loss of resources. So this is the place that I think I'm going to be putting the new track. Where is that beacon? It should be around here somewhere. Oh, there it is. <laughs> kind of hard to spot. So we're just going to split off the track from this location. We can find a seam in here somewhere. And then head on down this direction. Goodness gracious. <laughs> They're going to strike from the trees now. <laughs> I think luckily that guy's stuck so we can still build through, but that is still a little bit frightening. And another beacon, right where it should be. Although I think I actually may have placed... Uh-oh. We got an enemy and a summer sloop there. <laughs> so I don't want to get too far up there. But I think I placed this beacon to actually have a separate plan of kind of going all the way around and getting back here. That's going to require a lot of dynamite because it's blocked up. So we're just going to make this route, which is going to be you know, just sort of like the first draft. Uh-oh. Well, here are some of the long-ranged enemies. Definitely an example of where I would want a long-range gun to combat them. Because having to get up close means that they definitely are able to hit me. And uh, with my inability to craft a lot of the medicinal inhalers to uh, heal myself up, it would be nice to uh, avoid some of that damage. I'm starting to question my earlier surveying because those beacons have led me on a really circuitous route, which uh, is not ideal for a high-speed train network. <laughs> Well, I'm supposed to be heading north, and you can see that in between me and more north is this gigantic wall of rock. So I've definitely not done all my planning. All right, that looks kind of like it opens up. Oh, okay, there's... Oh, that's not wide enough for a train. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, well, these are the kind of scenarios where I definitely would want my gun to be fully operational. Because not only is this guy very strong, he's also long range. And that does not mean that I'm going to walk away from this unscathed. Whew. Trying to make a nice track around sand dunes is the worst because they have these peaks which are really sharp. And if you try and just go straight over them, your track is going to look absurd. So you have to kind of go around them. And I haven't figured out a way to make that not look really ridiculous. Uh-oh. <laughs> we got more activity. Well, I've made it all the way to the northeast section of the map where there is the coal and the sulfur waiting for me. The sulfur is over in that direction, and I've actually got two coal nodes right there, so the sulfur is just going to have to be conveyed a little bit this direction. But I think this is actually where I might end up putting the factory, kind of right on top of this plateau. It's got a cool little cave going in through the bottom there. Maybe I can try and fit a train station in there. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that because that requires a lot of space, but I think this is the area I'm going to work with. 
After taking a brisk walk to the sulfur deposit, which is in the northwest direction past some of these trees, I decided that instead of running a long conveyor belt from that location to the new factory, we're going to set up two truck stations, which will allow us to have an automated truck go back and forth, pick up the sulfur and drop it off because there's some cool elements down there, including a little stream, which I don't want to have just giant machinery running through all the time. And I figured a little car running through is uh, you know, a neat little aspect. There's also the coal deposits here. And since I'm gonna need a truck station in this location as well, we can load some of the coal in there and then we won't really have much of an issue with powering up that vehicle as it goes back and forth. But for now, I think I'm actually going to have to split this up into multiple episodes because we've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> I didn't think that the track laying from here to the main base was going to take so long, but it really did. But I think I'm pretty happy with uh, building on this random chunk of rock in the middle of nowhere because I did manage to get some of these train station elements to slot in. <laughs> you can see that they're clipping quite horribly and I, I don't know how I even managed to get them to, to start off like this. Um, I got kind of lucky too because you can see that if I orient these properly I can get the input and output conveyors on both of these to have access to as opposed to them just sticking right into the walls. So I'm going to need a lot more resources but luckily with all of the you know train already laid out I'm going to be able to get back and forth pretty easily by just throwing down one of my electric locomotives and uh, hopping to and from uh, the resources. So we've got a big project ahead of us. Uh, we're going to add the truck stations. We need to get some of the coal up onto this new platform here. I also need to kind of tweak it a little bit, but I think this is um, pretty much where we're going to see the ultimate foundations for the Bullet Factory. So thanks for watching this episode. We covered a lot of ground, quite literally, but we've got some even cooler stuff coming up next, so stay tuned for the next episode.